Welcome to the build video of the X-Hover Stingy Quad that I'm going to build. Um, I'm not going to ramble on this time, we're going to jump right into it. So here we go. Okay, I did attach the arms to the bottom plate, um, and I did use uh, 242 Loctite, um, and I was a little uncoordinated, but I uh, got it together. Um, next, I'm going to go and put uh, super glue on the edges of the arms, so that in the future when they get bashes, they don't come apart, spray apart. Now, the one thing about the stingy frame is they already beveled the edges. but. Even though they bevel the edges, I am still going to put super glue because when they get repeatedly, repeatedly bashed, even if they are beveled, they are going to still come apart. Okay, so I got the super glue on the edges, and I wasn't that neat. I did get a little carried away, but it's no big deal. This thing's gonna get bashed up anyway. Um, so next, I'm gonna go to mounting the motors. Um, I was looking at the frame here. It looks like the, there's only eight standoffs: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they're away from the center. So there's no need to put the standoffs on right now because it's not going to interfere with the routing of the wires or the motors or anything so I'm just going to leave the standoffs off and we'll go ahead and move on to the motors um, so I, I'm currently flying an X-Hover R5X 5RX I always get the numbers confused and uh, on that I have uh, Emax um, 2205 S's I believe and they were 2300 KV motors and uh, enough power, they were great for me. Uh, I did have a complaint that uh, I did bash, I did have a really bad crash once and I had to re-thread the threads on the motors and it seemed like the bells were real soft on those motors. So when I did this build, originally I was gonna uh, try out some Lumineer motors since I haven't had any Lumineer motors before. And But uh, Lumineer motors, they didn't have a motor size in stock that uh, you know, I, I want it as far as the actual size of the motor and the KV of the motor. I couldn't find one that was in stock. So originally I ordered the Schizo 2500 KV motors, which would have been more than enough power for me. And I waited, 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 and they never came into stock on Get FPV. So I got tired of waiting. So Get FPV was, they had really great customer service. They canceled my order and I ended up, uh, deciding to go back to Emax because I figured well I didn't burn out a motor or anything and the quadcopter still flies fine so I thought I would just stick with Emax and uh, I wanted to get a different motor and uh, I really don't need any more power but you know I wanted to get a different motor with different power so I found these uh, uh, racing special edition motors that are white and they say once they're done with the white they're gonna move on to black but uh, I got the RS 2306 and I got the 2400 KV motor they do have a 2700 2750 KV motor I believe um, for the same exact price but I didn't get that because I figured that would just be a battery hog on power that I really didn't need and so this is a slightly larger diameter and slightly taller motor but uh, that's what I decided to go with. Oh yeah, they feel good. They also have, I never had a problem with the C-clip, 
when I had a housing bend, I had to take the bell off, and I actually had to sand the bell down a little bit because it was rubbing. And uh, I had a spare C-clip because Emacs gives you plenty of spare parts. Um, so I put a new C-clip in, and I didn't have any problems with the clips, but uh, they went to a uh, regular screw head to hold the, um, the housing on because apparently they were having problems with that. Also, they... Uh, this one doesn't need a prop adapter because it has this little thing for the to help keep the props steady. So that's a different redesign on these new motors. So yeah, that's what I'm putting in. And you see extra screw for the housing, and then we have three millimeter arms and four millimeter arms. So that's pretty cool. Okay, got all four of the motors on uh, and lock tightened them and I used all four uh, holes because I don't really care about weight that much I'd rather just have all four holes um, oh yeah by the way just to let you know I bought the frame straight from X hover and uh, all the other parts came from Amazon or get FPV the get FPV they have really great customer service they're right here in Sarasota so I get free shipping next day so if I place it like before two, the next day I'll get it and you can usually get free shipping with them. The only problem is since I'm in Florida, I get charged sales tax. So some parts I was able to get cheaper off of Amazon than I was off of Get FPV. Uh, but not sponsored or anything, but that's where I get all my parts from. Um, for this build, I decided to try D-Shot. Uh, my last build, I was just using one, one shot 125 still had to calibrate so I decided to get D-Shot and I got D-Shot ready uh, ESC's uh, DYS XSD the D stands for D-Shot and 30 Ampers um, so yeah I guess we'll mount that ESC's next comes with the heat shrink um, so the one thing about I'm going to be using a Betaflight F3 board the one thing about Betaflight F3 board is you have to solder the power terminals to the um, to the board first since they go on the underneath the board and then you solder them to the ESC so I'm gonna have to undo these solder joints so I had to cut this heat shrink off and uh, I almost forgot before I do that um, I conformal coat all my boards in uh, silicone conformal coating which I have I thought it was on my desk here Uh oh. A few moments later. Oh, right here. Which I have right here. Uh, silicone modified conformal coating. I coat all my boards in that because I live right on a canal and I have sunk a uh, hexacopter that I had. I sunk that thing right in the middle of the canal and I didn't have any boards to conformal coat, but miraculously I was able to dry out that hexacopter. And it worked fine with the exception of the transmitter went out two weeks later, which I chalk up to it being underwater. So all my boards, including my ESCs, I conformal coat. So you just uh, you just coat the boards in this, let it dry for 10 minutes and you're fine. If you got to solder on afterwards, um, it the heat of the soldering iron takes it right off. Okay, I went and I uh, coated the backs of all the ESCs with uh, silicone conformal coating. I let it dry for 10 minutes. And while I let it dry, I went and I plugged in my Betaflight F3 uh, flight controller to make sure it worked. It worked. It came with 3.1.0 and I went and I flashed it to 3.1.7. And then I came back and now we're ready to go. Um, I tried to silicone. I tried to coat the boards 
as I am done with that side. Because like I said, you can heat it up and it will burn away uh, afterwards, but you don't want to coat the board, then solder, and then uh, recoat the board. So I only did the backs for now because I won't be soldering on the backs at all. So uh, next up is to mount the ESCs to the frame. And uh, what I do is I mount them with this double-sided Gorilla Tape. And uh, I already checked this stuff is non-conductive. So I'll just mount the four ESCs and I'll wire them up. Because it has BL, BEL Heli on here, you can adjust the rotation of the motor through the software. So I'm just gonna wire all four of them up straight and then later in software, uh, flip the two motors. So here we go. Thank you. 